Hello, I've been doing some research online and today we're going to be tackling a crucial topic for any game developer. The most common reason Steam users write bad reviews and exactly how you can avoid them. Even if you're not developing a game for Steam, this video can still be helpful as I'm going to be going over the features you should implement in your game to avoid bad reviews. Players will give negative reviews when they can't play the game they bought effectively and this could be for a number of reasons. So when you're making a game, even though it can be tedious and effort intensive, it's important you add the following features. One, completely remappable controls. Players expect to be able to change every single action to any key or button. There's a huge variety of personal play styles on Steam. Some players have different keyboard layouts like a QWERTY keyboard, or just in general, they like to remap controls because they're used to playing games certain ways. So they need to remap controls for your game. If your controls are locked, you're kind of locking those players out of your game. This is a common oversight for first time developers, but it's a fundamental feature because as you're making your game, you never really consider that someone else would want to play it in a slightly different way. To emphasize this point, I'll show you an example. So there's this game called Toyland Tussle. If you're a fan of Cuphead, you may like it and it has pretty positive reviews. Although, I'm going to highlight a negative review. And note, this review has nothing to do with the quality of the game. It's just the fact that they couldn't play it. So this review says, I would love to play this game and beat the boss, but the key binds are so bad and can't be changed. That's why I gave up. Please patch this game with remindable keys for keyboard. I made a video on adding remappable controls in Unreal Engine. Here, I'll make sure it appears somewhere on the screen now. The next point in terms of making sure players can play your game is when your game launches, you want to make sure it launches with a proper graphics and audio menu. Some games launch without any settings, meaning players can't change anything. Next, we'll just rapid fire through the most common settings you need to include in your graphics and audio menu. So first of all, you should have a option to change the graphical quality of your game. This is pretty standard. This will allow players to lower how everything looks on your game. That way it can run more smoothly on lower end PCs. If you don't have this and players are just locked into the default graphics, if they're running your game on a lower end PC, they will be able to update your game so it can smoothly run on that PC and it may lead to negative reviews. Next, you wanna include some display mode settings. So you wanna make sure that your game can be in windowed or full screen mode. Sometimes people like to play your game in a windowed mode if they have multiple screens and then they can drag your game over to another screen and then you want full screen mode sometimes people have full screen displays so they want your game to cover the whole screen with this you also want to include the option to invert your mouse on both the x and the y axes individually sometimes people like playing with inverted mouse controls and along with this you also want to include a adjustable sensitivity for the mouse and controllers. That way you can adjust the mouse sensitivity and the controller sensitivity. Sometimes people like to adjust this. You also want to include a frame rate cap. So add options to cap the frame rate at the most common settings, 30 frames per second, 60 frames per second, and unlimited. That way it can run as high as it possibly can if they want to do that. And then for the audio settings in your game, make sure that you have separate volume sliders for the following. SFX, so the sound effects in your game, and music, so the general background music in your game. And if you have dialogue in your game, make sure you have a separate slider for that. Those are the three main audio sliders that you want, because sometimes people just want to turn off certain sounds. For all these features, don't worry if it sounds like a lot. You have two options. The Unreal Engine Marketplace has loads of main menu templates, and these normally include all of these default settings, or there are many free videos online which will teach you how to build all of these systems. It's just, I've noticed if you go on Steam and you kind of look at new games by new developers, sometimes they won't have these settings and a lot of times people will leave negative reviews because they can't like update the game. This even happened with me. I'm guilty of this. When I launched my game, I didn't have remappable controls and I actually got some negative reviews because of this. I did later patch this and then some of those reviews did change. And it does make sense if you think about it, because if you buy something and then you can't really like update it or play it, you'd be slightly frustrated. So this is kind of a hopefully easy thing to avoid if you just add it. And then this is just a bonus note. 
if you are making a game on Steam, add achievements. Many Steam players like achievements and some people will just buy your game because it has achievements and they want to complete it. Okay, let's go on to the second reason why people will leave negative reviews for your game. This happens when there's a mismatch between the marketing and the actual game. A good example of this is Zucosis. So when the trailer for this game released, it went viral. But when the game launched, it launched two mixed reviews because it wasn't what players were expecting. The game is good and it's built well, although players were expecting a different type of gameplay when they play the game. So players form expectations from your trailer, store page and screenshots. If the final product feels different, then they feel kind of misled because they kind of felt like they were expecting something, although they didn't get that. I thought of some ways you could possibly avoid this. Try to play test your game early and often with people who aren't your friends and get genuine feedback on whether the game is fun and matches the experience you are promising. And also consider having a demo before you fully build your game. That way people can try and see the game and you can see if it meets their expectations. So to give a quick recap, you want to give players full control over how they play the game, how the game looks and how it sounds and you want to make sure that the game delivers on the promise of your marketing. If you implement these features, you should dramatically increase your game's quality and reduce the amount of negative reviews that you get. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, make sure to like and subscribe. If you're looking to learn how to make games in Unreal Engine, make sure to check out my free Unreal Engine beginner course. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!